I don't want to answer your question about the recession. Okay, so here's what we looked at last time. We said yield curve inversion happened in 2006, 2007, and then we had about 16 months until the recession in 2008 began. But it was a really bullish period for that 16 months. And in fact, the most bullish period was when that first rate cut happened. Now, as I was saying last time, we haven't had that first rate cut this time. The analog is playing out very similar. We'll show that in a minute. But here's where I think it could be very different. Okay, so let's jump ahead to where we were last time. Last time we looked at this, we said, okay, here's where the yield curve inverted, right? We had a nice strong rally out of that, just like last time. Now, what we're waiting on is that first rate cut, which caused that big leg up previously. Um, we also, at this point, the other day, hadn't really had a lot of dovish statements out of Powell yet. But interestingly, the FOMC meeting we just had, um, that changed that big time. On that note, let's have a really quick listen in case you missed it. How should we interpret the addition of the word any uh, before additional firming in the statement? So we added the word any as an acknowledgement that we believe that we are uh, likely at or near the, uh, the peak rate for this cycle. So the way, the way we're looking at it is, is really this. When we started out, right, we said uh, the first question is how fast to move. The second question uh, is how high to raise the policy rate. Uh, there's a natural, naturally it begins to be the next question, which is when it will become appropriate to begin dialing back the amount of policy restraint that's in place. Right, now what I find interesting about that is he omitted a step that I would have thought would be a step, and that would be how long do we leave it here after we've raised it up this high? But he's jumped right to, you know, how long do, or do we wait before we start cutting? Well, that's pretty dovish. They're, that means they're thinking about cutting, not, you know, pausing up here, let alone raising. So I think that was an interesting, uh, possibly little, you know, minor slip up on his part, I would say. Um, there's also some other interesting comments he made, um, but that was just one I wanted to highlight. And so, yeah, let's, uh, let's continue on here. Let's jump back to what we're looking at. And in fact, let's jump ahead to today's chart now, which, which is an updated version of this. Okay, so here's where we were uh, in the circle just a moment ago or a few days ago. These are weekly bars here you're looking at. So we were in this consolidation here. Um, we were pre-FOMC meeting talking about, you know, how we could, we could actually have a pretty big push up at some point. Um, didn't think it would happen that quickly uh, or with that sort of magnitude, but that puts us right at the top here, right back up to the highest point of 2021 resistance there. Okay, now for a minute here, I need you to forget about all the macro, forget about the recession talk, and let's think about this from a different perspective. What I'm about to say next is hard to kind of wrap your mind around if you're still in that recession mentality. And, I, and again, I get it. It's, it's a real issue. But what is the market better at than anything? It's climbing the wall of worry, right? And part of the reason, part of what's going on there is that people are short, people are underexposed, fund managers, mutual fund managers are underexposed and the market starts rallying and what do they do? Well, they need to participate. They have to buy, they have to chase, right? So keep that in mind and let's look at a scenario here that I think is worth considering. The question is, what does it do? Does it just break up to the upside to here and then turn over? Is that really, is that it? And I would argue that if you just look at the chart, your base case would probably be very different. Um, you know, we've had a consolidation uh, and, a very, and a significant pullback We've spent a fair bit of time here, almost a year and a half, uh, you know, without making any further progress with markets, markets sort of languishing through here. And so in some ways, we've already, you know, priced in the recession, dealt with the recession, the expectations of a recession. You look at a company like Tesla, right? Why is Tesla still down 30, 35% from its highs? Well, I would argue it's pricing being cut back, which affected margins. And why did they cut prices? Well, because they viewed economic weakness coming, I think, right? And and so in some ways, we've already we've already done the recession. If it turns out to be a hard, hard landing, then, you know, it's not over. And, you know, we'll have a 2008 situation play out. But this could be different than 2008, for sure. And if it is, we shouldn't be thinking in these terms right here, these sort of, you know, minimal terms, we should be thinking, well, what does this typically look like when you, when you break out from a long, a long base or a long consolidation? And to answer that, you certainly need to look at the magnitude of, of, of what you're dealing with, right? So let's, let's zoom back here. Let's go all the way back to, you know, kind of a flat period. I don't want to go to the bottom of 2008 necessarily, but let's go to enough history right there just for a bit of context. So let's show that. Let's grab a Fibonacci extension 
and start down here at sort of the lowest point, run it up to the top, do the pullback back to here, and you want to go right off that lowest point of the pullback, as you can see I'm doing. Click there. And now here are, you know, what you'd be looking at as, as profit targets as if this was a, you know, especially a small stock. I mean, this is typically how they would behave in sort of almost a exponential fashion. I mean, this is a logarithmic sequence, right? And so, um, the Fibonacci sequence. And so, you know, if, if this was a regular stock, you'd probably be thinking, okay, um, you know, here's the pullback. What's the 100% extension, as they say? And that's this line right up here at the top of the gray line. Well, that is a massive move higher. Like, that's a massive move higher. And that's not really the real big profit target. Usually people are looking for the this 1.618, which is, I mean, almost absurd, right? But that's sort of the, you know, the logarithmic nature of, of how markets behave. I mean, look back here, right? We had a pretty big high there. We had a you know, pullback and then a massive push higher. And we've done it many, many times before too, right? I mean, 2000 obviously was a, a case of that. Um, but many of these pullbacks sort of had, you know, exponential moves out of them. And so we spent a year and a half consolidating, going sideways, pulling back, testing, uh, built a base here and, and, and moved a higher off of it. And now we're, we're literally at the spot where we're looking to break higher. So the question is, what does this break look like? Like how, how extreme does this get? Well, if you're looking at it, you know, on a Fibonacci sequence, you're looking at like 34, 35,000 as a, as a peak versus the 16,000 we're sitting at right now. I mean, that, it sounds crazy to say, but by the same token, if you're just looking at the charts and you're sort of ignoring the noise, well, then that's what you end up seeing. I mean, personally, I don't think that's reasonable. I think, you know, maybe something like this could happen. I mean, that wouldn't be unreasonable to, to have a 100% extension from the lows up to there. And, uh, and then we could, yeah, see a, you know, uh, I wouldn't even call it a crash. I mean, just a, 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 <laughs> a reasonable pullback would be, would be in the cards, I would think. Um, in fact, this would be a good level to test again, right about where we're sitting today. So yeah, I mean, very interesting period right now. Um, I don't think a lot of people are thinking we push 10,000 points higher here on the, the NASDAQ, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's... Not my base case, but my base case certainly is, at least in the short term, let me zoom back in here. Base case in the short term is that um, we do break probably, you know, right away through this. I don't know, up to maybe here or so. Let's get rid of these for a sec. And and we probably pull right back to where we are today and sort of test these levels and uh, and decide if if indeed we're, uh, we're going to go higher or not. And, you know, let me just drop... A horizontal line there so this is sort of the you know the resistance that we're, we're testing right now and then the question is going to be you know what does it do after it pulls back are we are we then on our way like this um that would kind of be my base case honestly just you know some sort of break higher here um you know whatever that may look like and a, and a pullback and, and test of the the resistance and then yeah, i don't know where we're going after that but um but at some point, I expect to see something like this too, right? <laughs> so what, wherever it may come back down to. Um, anyway, that's, that's where I stand, um, and that's where we sit right now. So if you aren't following the portfolio series, uh, here's a quick uh, overview of where things stand. We had our highs the other day, but on Friday we pulled back a little bit. Um, so the, the growth portfolio is now up 36.3% since its inception on November 1st. And then the levered version is up uh, 47.2, so not quite the 53.9 I think it was previously um, since November 1st as well. So yeah, these are the, the portfolios. Um, there's, there's more here. There's the medium risk too and, and the low risk, which is even up 11.6%, the low risk with basically, well, just treasuries, one equity, and a bunch of cash. Um, so that's, I think, hilarious since November 1st. Uh, and then the speculative is uh, not doing quite as well, but uh, yeah, 23.7. Uh, again, over one and a half months. So, you know, still respectable. Uh, Anyway, if, uh, if this stuff is interesting to you and uh, you want to, you know, get notified when I'm doing trades or, you know, have thoughts and whatnot, um, I do have the Substack now, which is kind of cool. Um, you can subscribe there. I think it's seven bucks a month or something. And yeah, I basically just send out 
real time updates, you know, as I'm doing trades, whether it be personally or in the portfolios here, um, both uh, I, I comment on and, and yeah, just because it takes me a few days to get to actually making a video where this stuff comes out in a video format. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably helpful, useful, uh, good entertainment only, of course. But um, yeah, if, if this is you know stuff that interests you and uh, and you're you're enjoying this, then yeah, just subscribe over there and uh, and you'll get some notifications and whatnot. And uh, you can also see a few other portfolios that I'm managing that are a little bit more well. They're all they're all sort of for fun because this is entertainment only, of course. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's a good one there. I think it's up almost 50% now in, in even less time. So yeah, good, uh, good entertainment as I keep saying. So, all right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and, uh, maybe Merry Christmas if you're uh, around Christmas by the time you're watching this. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, my thesis starts to play out into the new year. I, I think that'd be a really uh, exciting and, and I think probable outcome, as I keep saying, despite, uh, you know, all the all the very negative uh, discussion about the economy and, and, and the implications for the stock market. So, and a very big thanks to my first hundred or so subscribers. Um, yes, yeah, super helpful for me to know that people are actually finding some value in this. So yeah, really appreciate that. Thanks, guys.